Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? <laughs> today is a great and amazing day. I've been chilling today, having a wonderful time. Life's been good today. Um, I want to talk to you guys about something I talked about before on my videos. I talked about um, something that I've experienced for like since I was like pretty much the time when I first got pregnant with my son. So when I was 18 years, when I was 17 years old, I got pregnant with my son, my firstborn. And then from that point, um, I pretty much like got really, I didn't know what it was at the time. Um, like something happened in my body, like in my brain. And I just felt like I was just not myself anymore. I just had a really bad experience. And I literally just really, um, hold up, let me see if I can get my connection right. Hold up, real fast. Is my connection good? Hold up, let me see. My connection better? Is it better? Okay. Well, we'll see if the connection can get better. Hey, everybody that's tuning in. So I wrote my page earlier today that I had a really serious breakdown. I had a serious major breakdown yesterday. Um, Cause I, like I said, I've been battling with depression um, since, like I said, when I was 18 years old, I got pregnant with my son, or 17. I prayed with my son and then literally something happened to me back then where I just did not feel like myself anymore. It was like, I got pregnant with him. I remember being a certain way. I remember me being like myself. I remember being this person that was like, I mean, like, I just remember being, I guess it was some kid considered normal, like where you just feel like you're in control or you feel like you're yourself. It was something I felt like, but I knew it was me because I feel it now. And basically when I got pregnant with my son, I just didn't feel like myself anymore. It's like throughout the pregnancy, I started feeling very different. I started like feeling like sad and just not feeling happy and not wanting to be up in the morning. Like, before then, I used to get up, even though I didn't go to, I didn't want to go to school or whatever, you know, because I'm in high school, but I didn't feel like I didn't want to be in this world. But when I got pregnant with my son, you know, I felt like I was, you know, I felt so like bad being pregnant that I just wasn't like super happy during the pregnancy. I just was not happy. I just used to be really depressed when I was pregnant with him. So this is like for my first son. So I didn't know what it was, but it just it felt off. So once I had him, I still felt off. As a matter of fact, I felt worse off. Like I was having really a really hard time con like connecting with him. Like, I don't know if anybody understood that, but I could not connect with him. I didn't know, I, it was my first time being a mom and I thought when I had a kid, I would be so joyful. I thought that I would like be so happy to have this kid. And it just was difficult. Like it was just not what I wanted. I did not understand it. He cried a lot. He was like, I was trying to give him a bottle. I mean, I like babies, but he was a difficult baby. I couldn't get him to be quiet. I couldn't get him to hug me. I couldn't get him to bond with me. Me and his, his dad were 18 years old. So his dad was trying to work. His dad was trying to be a dad at 18, which how do you know what a dad can be at 18? Thanks, Chloe. Like, what do you know for a kid at 18 years old? So like, I literally got, me and this dude was in a house with each other, basically fighting and arguing, not being happy, not being comfortable with each other, not liking having a baby at such a young age. So we're bickering, we're fighting. So I'm not really happy with this baby. So I'm crying, I'm crying all the time. And I look up and I figure out that I have like postpartum depression. They say I have postpartum depression, but I also was having nightmares at the same time. I was also being, having postpartum, having these sweats, but also having nightmares at nighttime. This was like torture. So imagine having a baby, my breasts are in flared up, I'm not feeling happy, I'm not feeling, I'm arguing with my boyfriend at the time, we're 18 years old, I'm seeing all my friends go to college, I'm seeing my friends that I went to school with, do stuff with themselves, have roommates, have this wonderful life, I'm really literally with this baby at 18 years old. No, I do it to myself, but I wasn't happy. Then my boyfriend, he could get up at the time and go and do what he wanted to do. I was a hater because I couldn't. So I was big, I was bitter and mad and angry and I was fussing him out. Nothing he could do was right because I wasn't happy with myself because I wasn't where I wanted to be at because I had all these plans. I knew I was going to go to college. I was a great student. You know, I had my grades where I wanted to. I knew I could do my life and I just got pregnant young and it just totally sent me on this, this, this like, I'm tell you, like my mind backfired and I just literally was not ever happy again. I literally was not myself. I remember myself being a self before I had a kid, and I knew I was no longer that self. I knew I, I could not get her. I couldn't find her. I missed her. She was this like young person that could do what she wanted to do. She could just like go out and about. I used to be in my friends. We'd be skirting through the town with our little cars, our little vehicles, 
And I just remember like being this person that just had a just a really good life. Like I remember going to work when I wanted to go to work, but I wanted to do it. Now I had this baby and I couldn't do it. I couldn't work when I wanted to. And then me, like I said, me and my, his, my boyfriend at the time, his, his father, he didn't want to wake up in the morning, so he was upset. He was angry, so we argued. It just was ugly and disgusting. So I had thoughts and dreams of killing myself. That's when the suicide kicked in because I felt like I could not get out of this world because now I had this kid, but I felt like I was obligated to this baby, I was obligated to this life, I was obligated to this boyfriend, I was obligated to this life, I was obligated to my parents, I was obligated to my grandparents to be here, but I didn't want to be here. So I was always contemplating suicide. Like literally, like I'm talking about like me going out, like figuring out ways to kill myself. Like how can I kill myself in the most easy way that nobody gets upset or no one gets hurt, but I can just be out of here, I can be done. But then what about this kid who's going to watch it? It was just like so much stuff in my mind. And so then I was all the story about the women that were killing their babies back then. All the women that were killing their babies and was like, you know, drowning their babies and not taking care of their babies. So I was seeing that there was definitely something going on and I was really seriously having thoughts, not of ever killing my baby, but just not wanting to be here myself. Like, I'd rather take me out than kill the baby, but I didn't want this life no more. I was very, 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 very depressed. And I didn't know that, that it would stay so long. I thought that after I had the baby, like, I mean, I had him. I thought he would go. They said, oh, you might have postpartum blues. But I just continued to have depression. I just continued to be upset, to be sad, to never be happy, to never feel good about myself, to just always be just not feeling like myself and just always missing something. Fuck, like I was missing, I was longing for something. I just really feel like I had disconnected from God and whatever it was or whatever, who, and I just I couldn't do right. So like I said, I just was depressed. So that was the beginning of the depression. And since then, I mean, it was intense. It wasn't easy. Like you guys see me right now, see me, you know, smiling and see me happy. And that's why I'm so happy because I don't deal with it as much. But what I'm telling you yesterday, it came on me. So that was years ago, that was 18 years ago. And since then, I've been depressed. I've been in the military. I couldn't stay in the military. I can't, I just couldn't do stuff. I just can't keep up with stuff like that. Like, I mean, I, but I've been to school. I've been to school a thousand times. I've got my degrees. So just because I've been depressed, it hasn't stopped me from getting a house super early, super driven, got, was married, was happy, you know, happily married at the first time at 18 years old, you know, had our kids figured it out, you know, made it work, you know, figured out money, you know, had a great life, had my, you know, I just was able to rent my first property out after that. Me and my husband, we, at the time we went through a divorce, I, I got property, I got money, I got my, my first nice car, my first Lexus. I've been able to accomplish so much stuff fast. But even with that, that has never stopped this depression thing from kicking me in, kicking my ass. So I have to do, now I have to do, I get to, I'm in, I've learned to do all these things with the depression, even with the stress of the headaches and the migraines that have come with it, even with the backaches and them always getting up taking pills and always going to the doctor wanting to find a solution, always getting up at church repenting for feeling bad, for feeling guilty, for never feeling good enough, for never feeling happy enough, for feeling, never feel like I make it, never feel like I'm, I'm perfect enough, never feel like I'm just whatever enough. The divorces, the marriages, you know, being with people and not being totally happy, but staying along with it because that's what I think I got to do. Not being happy with my truth for myself and because it's like, okay, being honest with myself, like, damn, I did not at the time want a kid, but I had the kid. I had it, but I felt bad because I had these feelings. I didn't want to have it. And I feel bad when I have the feelings again. Whenever I have a feeling, whenever there's a feeling that I feel bad about and I just keep letting it fester in me and I don't do something like to positively fix it around, then it, comes, it becomes really negative inside me and it gets a lot of power inside of me. And then once it draws me in, I continually think about it. And that's where depression starts to come in. It starts to come in because I'll think about it over and over and over. Like being here, Columbus. I've been thinking about the last two years of my life. And it was so great. But now I'm telling myself it's not. I'm asking myself, well, what have you done with the last two years of your life? You left. You're back here. What do you have for yourself? And everything is all around material. It's never about how much I've grown. It's never how much I've accomplished as an individual inside myself but what I what I have for myself it's always based off of monetary something or some labels I had myself and it just keeps me and it will bring me down and the other day yesterday I woke up so down from thinking about my life thinking about where I'm at thinking about I'm not good enough thinking about that I'm you know where am I doing my mom's house right now I'm stressing my mom out right now you know what happened to your marriage you know like just all these things like, can't understand certain things, but I know that I don't want to go back to certain things, but no, I don't know where I, I know I'm not fully, I know I want my future to look like, but some of these steps I'm taking, I don't understand. I want to make sure I'm doing the right things. So it got me down and I was waking, I woke up and I feel like I wanted to literally kill myself. Now, mind you, I'm a mother of five. 
I have, you've seen my, you see me. I literally inspire people to live a life of their dreams. I live my life. And I literally woke up with this life that I have that is really great and start questioning myself. I said my brother, he asked me a couple questions about what you going to do? How are you going to get the kids in school? How are you going to get the kids situated? Oh, you only got so many weeks. You've been mom forever. You need to hurry up. What you going to do? So it's making me think, like, oh, my God, what am I doing? He's like, I heard you were rich, and where's your money at? Like, dang. I mean, am I making the wrong moves? You know, I didn't know. I mean, like, I got here. I'm here with my mom. I'm enjoying my mom. Maybe I, need, I do probably need to get out. But I really do miss my mom because I'm really going through a hard time and I really do want to be here and I want the kids to see my mom, but at the same time I do need to go. So it is a little uncomfortable, but I just focus on all the uncomfortable parts of it and let myself get so depressed, so down, beat myself down so much. I could, I woke up out of my sleep with this stuff, okay? And then as I wake up my sleep with this, it's like all these thoughts of just being done with it. Just be done with it. Just get in already. Just be done with this life. You know what I'm saying? Like, just be done with it. It's like something is saying, like, just go out. Just be done with it. Like, just, just kill yourself. Basically, I'm like, whoa, kill myself? It's like, what have you done with yourself? You have no, nothing for yourself. Where are you at right now? You're at the bottom. You don't have anything. Look at your account. You could have more. How old are you again? You should be able to do this. You had this much money last year. You had that money the year before. Where's your savings account? How much are you putting away for your kids? What do you have for your future? What are you doing with your home in Jamaica? What are you doing with your furniture? What are you going to do with those cars? Oh my God, it just had me down. I was so freaking down that I literally could not sleep. And I woke up feeling like I don't want to be here. And I woke up feeling like I don't belong here. And I woke up feeling like I wanted to leave here. And I woke up feeling like I want to do something very, very irrational. Like get in the car and just leave and don't care and just don't come back. And that's like, it's not going to help me right now to do something irrational. It doesn't make any sense. That doesn't help. That doesn't help anybody. That doesn't do anything for anybody. Like, why would I do that? Like, why would I do that to myself knowing that that's the past? that will take me to like sadness. Like, but I can't control it. People always say like, oh, you can control it. You can control depression. You should be able to be happy. You should be able to think it through. That's why I give all these techniques on here on how to think through it. Because I'll be literally in the darkest of darkest spaces. And I'll just literally, they take me there. Like, you know, feelings of loneliness sometimes come on me. They come on me like, well, what are you gonna do now? Because you know, you're, you're gonna do single. You're single, right? So what are you going to do now? What are you going to do? You're just having a guy around. You know, then it's like if you talk to a guy, you're always scared. I'm scared. Well, what if, he's, what if it turns out to be the same? What if he ends up being like this again? Why do I want to go to the same situation? So it just had me down. So yesterday I was just very, just very, very, very down. I'm going to show you my eyes. See? You can see the pain in my eyes. I literally am in a lot of pain right now, guys. I'm just being honest. Like I share my... My good stuff, I share what I'm going to do that's amazing, but this is very hard to deal with it. Like, okay, so I'm dealing with, I'm not asking for like sympathy, but I'm just telling you that it's real, that it literally is something that will come on you, come on people, and people don't just want to go looking for it. They don't want to just be upset. I don't want to be unhappy. Me, myself, I don't really, if I got anything to be unhappy about, but I'm un, I was unhappy. I, I feel, feel it throughout the day for all kinds of reasons, for all kind of situations come on me and I get unhappy throughout the day. Like, it could be like the kids. A lot of times right now it's the kids. You know, like, even though I got my family here, my family's helping me. I, I can't even say even. My mom is helping me out a lot. My, you know, like, my mom is here. I'm at her house. But I don't feel like, I, I feel like it's hard for me to, first of all, take the help. Then at the same time, I feel like I'm a burden. Then I'm, you know, and then me and Mike. Mike's in another state. I'm here. You know, Mike has to get himself together. So since he's getting himself together, he can't really do nothing for me, the kids, right now. So I'm with the kids right now by myself here in Columbus. Now, mind you talking to somebody that was just in Jacksonville, Florida, before they was in Jamaica, living on, being on planes all the time. And then to be right here and wondering where my next step is after going through this marriage. And this all happened in one year, not even like, the year's not even over. This all happened in a couple months. Now, mind you, it's the same girl that was in California this time last year. Just in California this time last year, jumped from there to Jamaica, from Jamaica to Florida, from Florida to here. So I'm wondering, oh, you're jumping around because you're trying to figure out stuff. And then when that question comes, I'm like, uh, so I start thinking, well, what am I doing? It's like, no, I wasn't searching for anything. I literally just was happy. And I came here and now I'm questioning myself. Like, what are you going to do next? What's the next move? And I'm like, 
I don't know. And also dealing with the fact that, wow, I was really married. And then now I'm not married no more. Like, what the heck? How do you be in love with somebody one day and the next day you guys can't even, like, really be in the same bed with each other no more? Like, that's scary to me. First of all, I want to put up blockers. So now I'm not letting love in because even though I'm going through a time right now where I should be letting people in, I'm going through a time where I'm scared to let anybody in. So I'm even almost more distant because I'm afraid that, okay, any guy that comes along right now, you're probably going to do the same thing that the last one do. And I'm like, why am I thinking like that? I should be open. But then I'm also seeing there's a trend with me that I am picking certain types. So that makes me more depressed. So anything that's like, so yeah, sometimes the mirror of myself can cause me to feel depressed, to look at my actual self and see where the hell am I at and what am I doing and should I be doing more? Could I be doing more? Do I, I want to do more? Is this where I should be? Is, is, there, is there a should be? Am I on the right track? Is there a right track? What is the track? So it's like, you know, asking myself those questions. You know, being true to myself, but at the same time, when I ask myself those questions, it caused me to get really depressed the other day. And so, I literally got suicidal feelings. So I got up and called the crisis center. So I'm a, I'm a veteran. I was in the VA, and I pretty much, um, you know, served there for, like, served in the Air Force. I got out, and I was dealing with depression really bad in the military. I couldn't, they called it at the time, like, personality disorder. Um, they called it, like, they said I couldn't, like, adjust. I have a hard time adjusting. So it's like when something is going, you know, like some kids can go from some one house to another house without crying and they can just go and just be easy. Me, it's like I deal with it sometimes hard. Like it's like when I was a little kid, I used to get the choky, the choke in my throat. Like I want to cry because I don't want to leave this space. Like I want to be in this space all day. So I have a, like, a hard time pulling myself out of spaces, like if I'm doing something fun. It's like, I, you know, so that's probably what you call a kid with ADHD. If they're having a good time, they don't want to stop having a good time. So I would cry. So anyway, so like I literally the other day, you know, when I was, when I was in the military, that's what I was doing. I couldn't adjust to the military. I couldn't adjust to the travel, like the, not the traveling, but someone telling me what to do. That was the hard part. And the, the fact I might have to go to war and kill somebody was a thing too. So a lot, of, a lot of things, and I just wasn't happy there either. I just wasn't happy. When I think about my life, I'm like, dang, I've done a lot of amazing things. But if you ask me the, the most emotion that's been in front of it, it wouldn't be happy. It was like another dark emotion, like, when I think about my past. It's like, it's not, it's like I see all these great things happening, but the feeling of it was very intense for me, very strong. I couldn't adjust to it. It was hard for me. It was difficult. Always complaining. Something like what was happening the other day. And so I find a lot of it being depressing. So I just keep it to myself because I used to come talk about it and I would have people talk about it with, but it didn't really help. When I learned to quit talking about it, I start holding it in. And then once I start holding it in, it didn't help. It helped a little bit, but I was able to see my thoughts. I was able to see my thoughts and hear my thoughts and like listen to what's saying to me. That way, like the other day, when I, when I seen it, I caught it really quick. So I got up. And I called somebody, I called the VA crisis center. There's a number that you can call if you're a veteran that you can call if you're feeling like you're in a crisis, like you want to hurt yourself or kill yourself. The thing about it, when I called the dude, he was asking me, did I have any plans? What did I, what did I plan on doing to myself? Did I have any plans on killing myself? And he's like, well, so if you do have any plans, like what were you going to do? And I'm like, oh, this is the hard part. So it's like, I got to actually think about it. If you are going to kill yourself, what are you going to do to kill yourself? I'm like, ooh. I was like, well, I probably was going to use like, you know, like pills or something. Do you have access to pills? I'm like, no, I don't have access to pills. I'm not like, but I can get access. He's like, so where you going to get? I'm like, I probably would have, even though I probably wouldn't have ever drove to go get some pills to kill myself with my kids being there. That would be so rude. I would never do it to my kids. But the fact these thoughts will trick me into thinking that I'm going to do it, knowing I don't want to do it, and it causes me to think I'm going to do it feeling bad about thinking about doing it it's really freaking crazy so like I literally um so after that I'm on the phone with this guy and I'm really the one that has to really talk myself through it because he doesn't really know what to say to me he asked me questions like so so if you do you um have you ever had thoughts before have you ever tried to kill yourself before and he asked me these questions like they were hard I'm like yeah I actually have tried to kill myself before like, I didn't do it like in I tried to do it like in a soft way I went to kill myself but not kill myself. All, like, I wanted to kill myself, but not make it all hard, like on my own self. Like if I lived, it'd be all like, I'm walking around. So I tried to kill myself softly. Like, so I tried to run into a rail one time. This is crazy stuff. Okay. Um, I tried to take, not tried, I took pills. 
You know what I mean? I took pills. And so that was one, that was something I did before. So when he asked me that question, I was like embarrassed to say it. Like, I'm, it's like weird saying, like, wow, I did that before. I'm one of those. I was like, and I thought it was drama. I thought like, oh my God, I'm being so dramatic. Well, I'm, I was one of them girlfriends that was really, I was one of the people that was really dramatic. Like I was one of the people that had a personality type that I would have hurt myself to hurt you. And if you did something to me, I was gonna do something to, I would hurt me and you along the way. Like I would type of person that would punch you in the car while you're driving. You know, like I get so that mad that we're driving together and I would choke you. Like while we're driving, we could both die. And we have, we have kids in the car. That's how crazy and deranged that the depression and how deep and dark these deep emotions can take you to. So that's what I was experiencing in the military. I got out and like I said, so when I yesterday, I felt like that when they asked me this question, like, so have you tried to hurt yourself? I'm like, dang, I have before. And I thought about like, man, this thing has been going on for a very long time. So let me flip this. How can I learn to live with this depression? See, so you guys have caught me the last two years trying to learn how to run from it because I thought I could run from it. I thought that I could really, you know, like they told me, it's no cure for this. I mean, I told Dr. Zero, there's a cure for this. I don't care what you say. There's no, I'm, I'm going to get through this. I'm not taking that medication. I don't like the medication. I'm going to get through it. And I have. I've taken it a lot of hard ways. I'm not saying the medication helps because they gave me like weird side effects. Like I used to be anxious and, you know, like one time it made me like breathe really weird, but it did make me feel a little normal. So now like I have, I've learned techniques to do it without that like, okay, so recently, like the last two years, I learned to smoke. When I went to California, I started smoking weed, which helped me with the depression. So that's why you guys see me being super happy. Like, cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm smoked out. I don't, I don't do it, but it like, it helps. So I have, I have medicinal weed that helps you with, with, you know, with depression. Helps calm it, helps soothe it, helps to be able to live in it. So I don't want to make, take from one thing to another thing and like depend on it. So there's days I don't do it. And there's times I don't want to do it, but I also know it helps. But at the same time, if something's helping, why stop? My dad's do that with his medication. My dad's schizophrenic. Now this thing is even deeper. My dad is paranoid schizophrenic. He di diagnosed when he was, what, 15 or 16 years old. So I was dealing with my dad as well, too, taking care of my dad who was schizophrenic. Like, a, part, a big part of my life. He lived with me up until last year. Was it last year? Two years ago, I left the, when I came to California. I used to took care of my dad. So I had him on top of all these years with that. So anyways, the depression kicks in and it comes in. And so I'm noticing that a thing is that I've, when you run from it, when you run from who you are, which apparently that's who I became at 18. I became this person. I didn't want to become that person that had those feelings, but that's who I became. I did go from a very jolly person or something you want to call me as a teenager to a little, like a little spoiled brat to then to just having responsibility. So that did change me. So it changed me and I wasn't very comfortable with the change. So like some people don't come to me. You say, for instance, if you was in an abusive relationship, you might've been a person before that was, you know, there was this nice loving person. And then after you got this relationship, you got abused and now you're not that person no more. So now you change, you don't like the new person. You miss and wish you were that same person before you got into this relationship. That's who you're seeking. So that's, that's normal because you became something new. What I'm telling you is that if you want, if you try to fight yourself and you try to fight who you are, even if you don't like who you are, it's going to cause more pain. So what I learned yesterday was to learn, not even learn, is that I've been living with this all my life. I've been living with it. It's not going to go away. There's no cure for it. I didn't never want to admit to that. I'm like, no, there's a cure for it. I'm telling you, it's just like something that because it's my personality, it's a part, it's been who I've been. And so it's been a part of me, like all these other parts of me, like love is a part of me. Happiness is a part of me. Joy is a part of me. Kindness is a part of me. Um, and I don't want to say depression is a part of me. You don't want to say those ugly parts are a part of you. But I'm just saying when I admit it that, wow, depression is a part of me. I, I can be, I do suffer with, I have endured depression. And it's been a part of me just as much as love's been a part of me. I never understood how can I be depressed but happy? I used to wonder that. How can I be depressed but happy? I can be. I don't understand how you can be depressed and happy. How can you be joyful but sad at the same time? How can you be crying but laughing? Because you literally are all these things in you. And so that's why I shared my story with you today because I learned from all of this, there is this light that came out of this tunnel. I feel better, I feel great today. I started feeling better yesterday, you know why? Because I admitted all those things when a guy asked me. 
I felt more clear because when I was suffering through the depression the other day, when he asked me, have you ever tried to commit suicide? I told him yes. I was able to admit that the same way when you ask me something about tomorrow that sounds good, and I'll tell you the answer to that. See, you don't got to lie about what's not good in your life. See, it's good to tell the truth about everything that's going on with you, even if it's bad. Even if you're afraid of judgment, because when you say it out loud, you just say, I'm going through it. And then once you say, okay, I'm going through this, you can do, do something about it. But if you're afraid to say what you're going through, like I was doing, where I, I used to be hiding, being ashamed, that, oh, yeah, I do deal with this depression, but also I'd be happy. How can you deal with this? How can you spend so much but love to save? How can I be an oxymoron? I only want to be the good parts. I don't want to be the good, bad parts. I don't want to say I'm a depressed person. I only want to let you know I'm happy. So the only person I want to show you is the happy side. But I wouldn't be fair to you because then you're not being, you're not getting the real me. So now I'm learning to be my real self with everybody, even though it's difficult, even though it's hard, even though I'm uncomfortable sometimes. Me learning to be myself with my brother was difficult the other day. Me learning to sit there and let my brother talk to me and also at the same time know that I'm not a very, I don't want to be a nasty person. I don't want to rush back at people. I don't want to come for your life. That's not me. So now I can sit there and know that I'm the type of person that really does sit there and listen to you talking about myself so I can take it in. That's your experience. And even though I know it might hurt me when I go home, I allow myself to get hurt. I allow myself to put myself in that situation so I can actually go through the experience and feel it and be done with it. Even though I've dealt with this depression, I've lived with this depression, I've been a better person because of this depression. Even though I've dealt with the depression and though I know I might have cut some people off recently because I'm going through things or I'm experiencing things, but that's because I go through it and I'm just honest with you. And I might hit you back up in a while and say, what's up? But I'm not, I would be lying to you if I told you that all my days are sunny, that all my days are happy, that every day I wake up and I just feel great. Some days I do, and I, when I do, I tell you guys that. I let you guys know that. But I would be lying to you if I didn't wake up to you and tell you the bad times. If I didn't tell you that right now, I'm, not, I'm, in, a lot, I'm in a lot of pain right now. I'm in a lot of pain right now going through this thing with my, with my husband. Going through a divorce with my husband is not right now I want to do right now. Also being like right here with my kids on myself. You know, mad, like, dang, can you, you know, I'm hoping he get his stuff together so he can come help. But it's not even just him, it's like all the dads. Like, where are y'all? Like, where are you? Where's my daughter's dad? Like, why I got it? What's your problem? What is your reason? You're going to blame me? You're going to blame somebody else? You, where, where's you at? I'm here. So wondering just sometimes and then wondering where friends are at. Like, where are you at? Where are you at? You see me. I see you. Where are you at? So it's like wondering. But you know what? At the end of the day, you lean back, you sink in, you think, I'm here. And I know there's a source. There's a God that lives in me, a God up in the heavens, whatever you want to call it that helps me and takes care of me, I'm going to talk to that. I'm going to get to know that. I'm going to get to know me. And a part of me is this is me. So if you're dealing with depression and you've dealt with it, don't be ashamed. If you're dealing with postpartum, mental illness, problems, whatever, don't be ashamed of it. Come out, talk about it, say it. The more you come out and talk about it, it actually frees you of it. And the fact that you know that you're dealing with it, you might live with it, and it could be something that you suffer with the rest of your life. Be honest, be transparent. People say, this is what I deal with, this is what I go through. I go through this, but I also am happy. So you either take me as I am or don't take me. But I don't want to come with you and try to change myself, be something I'm not, be fake and phony, and it makes it hard for me to breathe in them type of shoes. I can't be that. So that's my love to you guys. That's my transparency today. That's my truth. I love you guys. I pray you have a blessed, 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 blessed day, a blessed, 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 blessed life. Live your best life. If you're dealing with it, it's okay. Still deal with your best life. I'm still happy. Even though I was depressed yesterday, I'm happy today. I feel good today. I feel blessed today. I'm loving today. It's an amazing day, and I hope you have an amazing day, too. Watch my video. Share it with somebody you know might be doing mental illness. Inspire them to come out. Don't make them feel bad. Don't make them feel like there's nothing wrong with them. Don't tell them they don't need medication. Don't do that stuff. It doesn't do nothing. It makes them just feel worse, like something else is really wrong with them, and they don't want to come out. Talk about it. Just be free. Listen to people. Let everybody know that everybody's going through stuff. Everybody has their own issues and situations. None of us are perfect. We all come from the same source. Love each other and all that great stuff and be blessed.